today we were planning to have uh, another speaker, um, so I'm just going to give a small replacement talk, um, and it's going to be rather informal. Uh, some ideas that uh, are around uh, in, in in things Pierre and I have been doing. Um, so, so this is partly collaborative work, um, and and I just wanted to like present these ideas and see what you think of it. Uh, what's whether it's I find it rather intuitive, uh, but of course this is intuitions are not necessarily shared. So it would be really useful to hear your thoughts on this, um, and it's all work in progress very much. Um, so I wouldn't count as an official. Uh, uh, instance of the seminar, uh, uh, and you're free to leave if you think if you were expecting uh, something uh, finished or uh, proper. Um, but nevertheless, it might be of some interest, uh, uh, and, and and it might surprise the top. The topic of it might be surprising, uh, given that it's just about intuitionistic logic, uh, which is a fairly standard logic for my standards. Let's say. Uh, and, and, but there will be a connection with, with, with other stuff I've been presenting here. Um, so there is some, some uh, overlap. Uh, so um, it, it's going to be uh, informal, as I said. Um, it, it's about some recent discovery of uh, semantics for intuitionistic logic. Uh, that seems correct. I mean, I haven't gone to all the details of the proof but the proof strategy uh, is there and um, well in every case I have gone through uh, it seems to be right or but 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 I haven't written everything down and the devil is always in the details and um, so there might be problems with the formal semantics we've developed uh, but on the other hand uh, these probably will if existent, uh, will be minor, and the interpretation seems to go beyond that. Uh, but it's it's an interpretation of the semantics, which, as a semantics for intuitionistic logic, is also an interpretation for intuitionistic logic. Um, so, so, so on the formal details, there might be some uh, 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 minor uh, mistakes, hopefully minor. Uh, uh, but but the, the content is mainly informal and. Um, but of course, given that it's an interpretation of this formal semantics, I have to show the formal semantics too. Um, which is a relatively simple semantics, uh, at least for my taste. Uh, so, so what is intuitionistic logic? Uh, I assume most of you have heard about it. Uh, it's uh, it's, it's uh, logic that is created by Brouwer. Um, in, in 1907 already, and then it's formalized by his student Heiting uh, in 1930. Um, and this is the basic for, basis for constructivism in the foundations of mathematics. So this idea that uh, mathematical objects are not uh, in some platonic universe, but are constructed by people. Uh, and this requires a whole different way of seeing logic, because now we cannot like, assume that everything is either true or false. Uh, from the start, because that means that they would already have truth values out there. We have to construct truth and falsity uh, if we want to uh, if we want to prove something. Uh, so it's well, I go to the specifics uh, immediately. But uh, so this idea is that uh, if you have a constructivist view on mathematics, you need a, a different logic, and it's a very well developed and studied non-classical logic, the most well developed. There's tons of mathematical and philosophical literature about it. Um, it's a very like formally interesting logic, even at the propositional level, which classical logic is not really. It's, it's, it's a very like just truth tables. This is not characterizable by truth tables, um, and it's uh, well, it, it, it's really a, a big field uh, in, inside the field of logic. Um, so it's useful beyond this constructivism in mathematics, in the sense that it could uh, give an account of verificationist empiricist philosophy of science, um, which is the view that uh, uh, so all our knowledge is based on, um, on, on consequences that come from uh, observations, uh, 
things that are verified uh, by means of observations. Uh, and this is very similar to the idea in mathematics that everything has to be constructed, everything has to be constructed, you'd say, uh, from observation. Uh, and Dummett, among other people, have worked out uh, such, a, uh, uh, such a more general uh, philosophy of science of, um, of, of empiricism. Um, uh, based on intuitionistic logic. Um, it's also very useful in computer science uh, because all these constructions uh, are perfectly algorithmic. So if we have a proof for something in mathematics, we need to also have an algorithm for the, the, the thing you're proving, uh, which makes it like that part of mathematics, intuitionistic mathematics is directly useful for automatically and by necessity uh, uh, useful for uh, uh, making programs. Um, and also, intuitionistic logic can be seen as the logic of programs, um, but I won't go into details there. Um, so there's a lot of links with computational aspects, uh, deep links, and, and more and more people in, 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 in computer science, in computer science, are interested in, in, in intuitionistic logic. But be, beside that, uh, it's been used in type theory, category theory, algebra. So serious mathematicians, they are willing to engage with a non-classic logic, which is very unusual. I mean, this is the only instance. Uh, um, and you can, you can either see it as an object of study or really have a constructivist philosophy of mathematics in the background. But the two are perfectly uh, compatible. Um, by the way, interrupt me at any stage. Uh, uh, I don't. This can be pure conversation. Uh, it doesn't have to be me talking all the time. Uh, you can even have like the whole thing in, in conversation form rather than uh, presentation and, and, and discussion. So, so how can we characterize this formally? Uh, well, uh, the usual thing is proof theory, of course, um, and actually, it's surprisingly simple. Uh, in the proof theory of intuitionistic logic. So you just take away, you took any like usual account uh, of proof theory in classical logic, um, which is axiomatic uh, or uh, natural deduction or sequent calculi. The thing that you have, whatever you did uh, in, 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 uh, in a basic logic course, you can just uh, eliminate, eliminate some aspects, some rules in it, and you get intuitionistic logic. I mean, of course, you can set up a proof theory for classical logic that is not just uh, uh, amendable to, to intuitionistic logic, but usually that is considered um, a, a problem. I mean, that, that's not a good proof theory if you cannot just... Uh, like it, me it means that there is some problem with model modularity, that you cannot just like take away something important and, and, and still get a, an interesting and still leave the other uh, things intact. So, so it's kind of almost like a, um, a benchmark for a good proof theory that you also get intuitionistic logic out of there by removing some rule. So specifically, what do we want to remove? That's excluded middle, of course. We don't want that A or not A, because like you, only have, uh, you don't necessarily have a construction for A and its negation. Um, you don't want to eliminate double negation, and this is directly related to the absence of the reductio ad absurdum for positive conclusions. So if we want to conclude A from a set of premises, then that's not the same thing, or you cannot conclude that from uh, the fact that adding not A to premises gives you absurdity, which is a usual technique used in mathematics everywhere, reductio argument. Um, and it is perfectly okay to do that for negations, if we want to confirm that something is not true, we can just uh, uh, assume that if it is true, and then we can get to absurdity. But to, to affirm something positively, uh, you cannot do it in this way by intuitionistic standards. Um, so this is, this is very close to the intuitions behind uh, the constructivist philosophy, um, and it is extremely simple to characterize, not more difficult than classical logic. On the other hand, the semantics is a whole different story. Surprisingly, I, I've always thought. Uh, so, so there are many adequate semantics. I mean, this is a whole, like, almost a field. You can um, uh, 
people have seriously tried this. It's not that this is uh, just like underdeveloped or something like that. Um, and there's like, I would make a distinction between two, two sort of approaches. Structural approaches that are still relatively doable in terms of complexity and objectual approaches that are um, have their, their issues without being disrespectful to any of these. But for the structural ones, uh, there's algebraic approaches with the Heighting algebras, which are very well known in algebras. Um, and there is an inferentialist approach where you basically just say, um, well, whatever, well, it uses meaning. Uh, if you have the rules in the, in the inferential system, uh, in, the, in the proof theory, then that determines the meaning of, of the connectives. Um, and of course, given that the proof theory is so simple, also an inferentialist semantics is going to be simple. I mean, that, that's not a problem. But it doesn't give you much extra information of what these sentences mean beyond how they are used, just by definition almost. Same with the algebra. You want to keep it as general as possible. And you just care about uh, the, the, the relations between propositions. Um, um, which come with which are in, in, in clear uh, correspondence with the proof theory. So there's not so much added there either. But there, it's also a very, it's not more complicated than Boolean algebra, uh, which is the one for classical logic. Um, so also on that level, we are, uh, I mean, they are interesting approaches and, and, uh, and they are not, uh, there's not much problems with them, just that they don't give a semantics in the ordinary sense of the word of uh, a saying which things uh, correspond uh, to our uh, uh, sentences. Um, like in a classical case, of course, if you don't have on a Platonistic view, then maybe you don't want for mathematics to have these things that correspond to it to be like objects in a Platonic universe, but rather like constructions or something like that. Um, but you want, uh, um, um, you want something, uh, something, uh, 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 some object states or constructions or something like that in an objectual approach. Um, and these are given, I mean, it's not that they are not there, but they are rather complicated and there's are quirky frames, which I always have found very weird from a constructivist point of view. So these Kripke frames are like all Kripke frames, just like sets of possible worlds. But these possible worlds are classical, um, or they could be seen as classical. And it's like a, a sort of the picture you get is um, well that we have a sort of temporal view um, of, 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 of proofs in. Um, in mathematics that always give you more information and so the, the worlds get more populated the whole time um, temporally and you have some uh, restrictions on these frames um, but the notion of a possible world or, or even a frame um, and the temporal temporality of it doesn't really correspond well with the idea of constructions in itself, uh, it seems to me, uh, it seems like you already, to, to capture the meaning, need to think of possible futures in which you will establish stuff. So to see whether something is true, you have to look at all possible futures and so on. I mean, it, it, it seems like almost inherently a, a, a non-constructive uh, approach. But this is like, I don't have no, no time to give thorough uh, arguments against it, uh, but it's it, it's a bit it's a bit uh, weird. One would say it's like a translation to another system, which is super interesting that the translation is there, um, but uh, it's um, well, uh, and then there's a lot of more complicated mathematical semantics and topology and there uh, in, in, in in, in intuitionistic arithmetic and so on, um, but they are like they involve really substantial uh, um, uh, mathematical uh, machinery, um, and and I would say that none of the object objectual ones have a clear and attractive uh, philosophical interpretation. This is a very like harsh and blunt statement. 
Um, but, well, uh, if you try to study them, I think you might be convinced that they do. Of course, these people have given philosophical uh, 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 interpretations, uh, but they're like difficult to head your head or, uh, get your head around. And um, Then uh, there is the BHK interpretation, uh, which is very well known. Um, Grower, um, I think, of Mogorlov uh, interpretation. Um, that is not really a semantics. It doesn't work as a formal semantics, but it's a good way to to interpret the, the ideas behind the system intuitively. So uh, we say that a proof for uh, uh, A conjunction B is a combination of a proof for A and a con proof for B, or you might say construction for A and B is a combination of a construction for A and a construction for B. Uh, a proof for A or B is just either a proof of, or, of A and a proof or a proof of B, and this is the very long classical aspect here. Like we can very well uh, uh, prove a, a disjunction, uh, like for example, A or not A, by uh, proving that its uh, converse is, is, is absurd. So A or not A holds in classical logic because we cannot have A and not A. Um, uh, but here you really need to have a proof for both uh, either A or proof of B. Um, and then a proof of K implies B is a procedure that takes you from a proof of A to a proof for B. Um, uh, so it's a, it's, a, it's a purely procedural approach where you just morph one proof into another. And for negation, uh, that's just a proof uh, for A implies uh, uh, a bottom, which means uh, absurdum. So um, it's possible to transform any hypothetical proof of A into a proof for the absurdum. That's proving falsity. Um, but so this, this is a very interesting interpretation, but it doesn't, it's not formal. It's not, uh, you can uh, um, have a, 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 a version of this uh, about programs and so on, uh, um, but, but it doesn't give you a semantics in itself. Um, and here, what I try to do is give an intuitive semantics um, that, or I hope it's kind of intuitive, that is um, rather close to the, the BHK interpretation, um, uh, but, but nevertheless, is, a, is, is, is like, uh, yeah, you'll see. Um, so I first give the semantics, but I'll go here very quickly because I'm mostly interested in the interpretation of it. And for the interpretation, we'll have to come back to the clauses of the semantics anyway. So without the interpretation, you will not be able to make much sense of it either way. Uh, but I think I can, or I can um, argue in favor of every single clause as being um, justified by some intuitions. So what is an intuitionistic model? As, as we define it, I mean, it's not, uh, um, it's, not, it's not a concept that exists already. Uh, I mean, maybe I should do it for another word, like a uh, Louvain uh, intuitionistic model or something like that. Um, uh, it's a combination of a set of findings um, and a function simply that assigns to uh, each member of the, uh, the, the, the primitive formulas and to bottom. Um, a set of uh, um, sets of findings. Um, what is a finding um, intuitively? And I will get into more detail there. Uh, a finding is just a, like a concrete inquiry into the world or into what is true. Um, it could be a mathematical construction. It could be an empirical scientific study. Um, it could be. Uh, conceptual analysis, but it's important that this is uh, something, I mean, for the interpretation is important, not for the formal semantics. Uh, it's important that this is a concrete thing, a material thing. It's not, we're not interested in like the proof for, like in an abstract sense, but like some person uh, at some time having given a proof. Uh, uh, that's a finding or uh, uh, somebody, so, some scientific study uh, published in a paper done by some people, the material stuff uh, is the finding, 
it's not something uh, like the concept of a proof or the, it's not something like that, it's something touchable, uh, at least in my interpretation. But this is just a semantics, I mean, it's any set uh, is a model and uh, any function that um, assigns to um, uh, a primitive sentence uh, a set of establishers. Um, so, establishers are sets of findings. Uh, so that's like scientific studies brought together, like a bunch of uh, 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 scientific studies, for example, uh, uh, that establish a sentence. So and sentences can be established by, by several bunches of scientific studies uh, together. Uh, so, for example, if we have a uh, sentence A, uh, uh, then that could be established by uh, this sole uh, scientific study over here, and it could be established by these two other scientific studies over there. Uh, one of the two would be enough, but uh, might have two, of course. Uh, um, so, so that's the idea, um, and, and it's not restricted to, 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 to mathematics or to, 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 to any uh, specific epistemic task. Uh, it's just like you have a, an epistemic action that establishes something. Uh, um, is this like basis more or less clear? Um, so we have scientific studies and together they might establish a certain conclusion. Of course they all on their own they also establish some some sentences but if you have multiple you can establish more. Uh, um, for example if we have a uh, a sentence that uh, um, that uh, the vaccine vaccine for COVID is effective. Uh, this might be established by a bunch of studies that all uh, focus on some aspects of the vaccine, and if you take them together, you get an establisher uh, for the sentence uh, the vaccine is. Yeah. I have a question about these findings. Uh, are they supposed to be like a positive, uh, trophy, trophy, uh, a positive conclusion about something that does? Uh, or is it supposed to be like uh, just an event about finding whatever could be like uh, something that exists? Uh, that's a very good support. question. Um, and I think actually a both effective reason, reading and a non effective reading works here. Um, so uh, it's about an internal logic and that doesn't really matter on whether you're right in your findings um, but of course uh, and, and this kind of anti-realist perspective empiricist perspective works pretty well with the original project of intuitionism of constructivism um, but in fact they could also be uh, a sort of facts uh, like like effective findings uh, um, um, where we only have to look at uh, um, if, there, if there is a finding then it is a, a, a actualized finding then, it is, then it's really also effective uh, that's, uh, this is related to that question should I expect the set map to bottom to be empty or should I expect it to, the, to be the set of like the finding that the earth is flat and the finding that water is made of aliens? Uh, um, yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> uh, so, so, I think it's, 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 sometimes it's the same question, right? Uh, so, so, if so we're only are, talking about facts, it's just empty, I guess. They are, right? they are concrete findings, but they are not necessarily actual. That's the point. Uh, okay. So we also have, have hypothetical uh, findings, mm -hmm. and there will be no actual findings, or no actual effective findings for uh, the, the bottom for, for the absurdum uh, but you could imagine that somebody had uh, come up with a finding of the absurdum uh, so, so it's, 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 it's concrete in the sense that we are thinking about them as uh, we are thinking about this whiteboard, something we can touch um, but of course we can speak about the, 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 the possibility or the, the non-actualized uh, blackboard that could have been there. Uh, 
uh, right? Um, and, and, and a bottom, uh, a finding for a bottom, for, for the absurdum, um, will never occur. Uh, uh, but nevertheless, we can imagine hypothetically that somebody had found a, a, a proof for the absurdum. Um, uh, this is like a, a, a potential object. One step farther toward the fringe, then, how about the finding of a round square where maybe it's metaphysically impossible? Not in there, probably. Oh, but this is even worse than metaphysically impossible. It's logically impossible. Right, right. So, <laughs> so it just like, it, it's, uh, it's very important that there can be stuff that is not uh, actualized, so like the, the, bot the bottom particle will hopefully not be realized. Uh, but, but you have to do uh, subjunctive reasoning here. For the error. Uh, okay. So yeah. suppose that there were a proof for the for A, even if A is false, then uh, we can give a proof for B. This is in the BHK interpretation, mm -hmm. uh, the DID behind the implication. Uh, but this is like a hypothetical presence of a finding. Suppose that we had a finding for A, then we had a finding for B. Even though A might be false. Um, uh, it, it's for it's to account for, and I will talk more about this later. But when I already do it, it's to account for this uh, subjunctive reasoning in science, uh, where sometimes a scientific study does not confirm anything, like touch, like a direct observer, observable about the world. But like, uh, if uh, if we had a vaccine with these properties, then it would be useful for these groups or these diseases or something like that. Um, even though we might not have this vaccine, you see? Uh, this sort of um, uh, yeah, subjunctive uh, conditional reasoning uh, is important, and that's why we have findings that are not actualized. But actually, it doesn't matter uh, uh, whether they are actual or not, because we are giving a semantics for logic, uh, which is all about uh, hypothetical reasoning. Uh, so which ones in the actual world are actualized, uh, it doesn't have to be characterized by the semantics. I mean, you have to add that on top of it. So, so categorically speaking, uh, we should think about findings as events, or as, or as process, or like a... Uh, um, they are concrete, so they are... Uh, uh, an event of finding something, or...? They can be... Uh, I like to see them as, as acts okay. uh, of, of agents. Um, I guess you could also see them as events or even as just facts in the world. Uh, facts not about the real world, but facts about uh, like epistemic uh, activity or something like that. Uh, or they can be like touchable objects simply, uh, like a scientific study in the sense of the, the, the I mean, scientific studies maybe not touchable, but uh, um, a construction, a mathematical construction uh, th that a person writes on paper. I mean, it, it, it's material stuff. Um, so there's all levels of, 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 of characterization that you might have, but it doesn't matter. The uh, point is that it's concrete and it establishes some things. I mean, and it can establish something together with other uh, findings. Um, Uh, so we call the, the sets of findings bunches, just for short, a bunch of findings, collection of findings, uh, set of uh, scientific studies, something like that is a bunch. Um, it's not a very, if you have a better word, then I'm happy to. Uh, um, so uh, if we have a set of bunches, we can call, we can uh, uh, characterize its upper set, which is basically just uh, every bunch that extends it uh, is included in it. Um, so uh, a sentence uh, can be established by several bunches of findings, right? Uh, a, B, uh, C, D, E, F, G. Um, and then we might be interested in uh, in, in, in richer bunches, um, I mean, uh, A, B, C, uh, D, uh, H, for example, uh, is an extension of this thing. Um, and so 
this thing together, I would not say establishes uh, the, the sentence, but it nevertheless um, gives you enough information for the, for, the, for the sentence, right? Because the, the rights, you have A and B in here, and A and B establish the sentence. Um, so there's too much here, uh, but nevertheless, uh, it will be interesting. We will say that this one constructs uh, A2. Uh, it doesn't establish it, but it constructs it. Um, uh, so, uh, we, we are interested in, in, in getting all the supersets of all these bunches that are uh, establishing uh, sentences. Um, uh, um, and so this upper set just takes all these supersets of bunches. Um, we call a proposition just a set of bunches that is closed under a uh, superset. Um, so if we take all, uh, all extension, this is a set of bunches, you see. Now we take all the superset extensions of this, uh, we get a big set of bunches, and we call such a, uh, um, such a big set of bunches um, a, a, a proposition. Um, and we say that, uh, Sentences or the, the bottom part they go express uh, the proposition that is uh, that is uh, the, the, the the upper set of um, of the, the bunches that establish it. So the proposition that is expressed by A is not just these bunches, but all uh, the larger bunches too. That's the proposition expressed by A. Um, so the members uh, of the proposition expressed by bottom, remember that bottom also just got in this, a bunch of things that established it, hypothetical findings, of course. Um, we hope, unless the world is trivial. Um, or, or epistemic notions are trivial, uh, if we have an anti-realistic notion. Um, so we call these inconsistent bunches. So uh, not just the, the establishers of uh, a bottom of the absurdum are um, uh, are inconsistent bunches, but also everything that is bigger than that. If you have an inconsistent uh, finding, uh, then all uh, sorry, an inconsistent uh, inconsistent bunch of scientific studies, then every richer bunch of scientific studies or findings will also still be inconsistent, of course. Uh, um, we call two bunches incompatible if their union is inconsistent. So uh, if we have a finding uh, that establishes that, uh, um, that this chair uh, is, is black and blue, uh, and we have a finding, a hypothetical finding, that establishes that it's green, uh, well, then that's uh, going to be a finding that um, a bunch of findings that establishes the contradiction, the absurdum, uh, right? Because it's in, and, and we call it an inconsistent finding, uh, inconsistent bunch. But if we add still other findings to that, the bunch remains inconsistent. If we add to that a finding for one plus one equals two, uh, it will still uh, be an inconsistent bunch. Um, uh, okay, uh, we use F and G for findings and B and C for branches uh, as variables. Are we okay so far? Yeah. I have a question, maybe yeah. that's it's interesting. If your, your findings are supposed to be acts, but what if you have a new finding that appears the very after one that contradicts the value of a use finding? Right? Yeah, uh, so, so this is a completely monotonic like view on yeah. on, on science. Uh, so then then the first one was not a finding in reality. Uh, like um, as we said, there are basically findings that are the finding as well. But uh, yeah. So so what you might do in that case is say that the thing that. Um, that we thought was a finding, because we were wrong, was actually uh, uh, just a hypothetical finding. Um, 
and not actualized. I mean, it seemed to be an actual finding, but in fact, that nothing is found because it was wrong. Uh, so, so, but this aspect is completely not uh, taken into account. The whole falsif, uh, uh, well, non monotonic uh, approach that, that we find in, in science. It's like at a moment in, in science, given the, 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 the views we have, uh, what is a finding and what is not. Um, but, but that's an excellent point, uh, and there might be some actually something to do with it in the sense of developing some sort of non-monotonic intuitionistic logic. But here it's like plain uh, old-fashioned intuitionistic logic we're after. Um, so, so that's why also we have this idea that in the proposition, uh, richer bunches are still uh, uh, bunches uh, uh, that construct the formula are still in the pro proposition, uh, while in principle if this finding contradicts this finding, uh, uh, sorry, if this finding contradicts uh, one of these two, then adding it to the, 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 the original establisher seems to be a, a, a not anymore uh, a, a, like evidence in favor of, uh, of the sentence, um, because so, so, so then you might have another kind of uh, propositions that are much more complicated, but here everything is simple. But thanks a lot for an excellent question. Uh, so now we have two relations, and this is really crucial. So usually people define just one relation of, uh, of, of, of how uh, semantic stuff um, verifies, let's say, uh, sentences. But here we have a notion of establishing and a notion of constructing. This thing here constructs A because the, the information given by, given by these findings um, is enough for, uh, to construct the truth of A. I mean, you have everything to get to A. Uh, but it doesn't establish it. It's too, there's all this stuff that has nothing to do with it. Uh, so that's a big crucial difference. And there you see the, the, the relation with other work we've been doing. There's a relevance notion here. Um, the notion of construction is deeply irrelevant, while the notion of uh, establishing is deeply relevant, at least as I uh, 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 read it. Um, so the notion of establishing will not be closed under upper sets, uh, uh, while the notion of, of construction has to be. Uh, so if you look at intrusistic logic, the conclusions we get uh, uh, arrive at by intrusistic logic are about what can be constructed. Uh, it's not about what is actually being constructed, but about what can be constructed. It's not about what has been established, but about what is establishable. No, not establishable, constructible. Uh, uh, from uh, anything uh, in a given pool of uh, 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 findings, either possible or actual. Um, so, so, so the construction is the is the is the irrelevant notion, and this is the notion we are first going to define. Um, uh, so, if we wonder whether a primitive formula um, is uh, constructed by a, a bunch of findings. Uh, that is true if and only if uh, the, 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 the bunch is uh, um, uh, inside the bunch, there is uh, a member of the establishers of uh, the sentence. Like here, uh, this one is not an establisher, uh, so our semantics doesn't give it directly, but there is an establisher inside of it, is included in it. Uh, so, we will say that this one constructs A, despite uh, it not uh, establishing it. Uh, we just say that uh, uh, B uh, uh, constructs bottom if uh, B is inconsistent, uh, where inconsistent, I remind you, is also uh, a proposition, is also closed under uh, uh, strengthened uh, or extended uh, uh, bunching, um, or oh, extending of bunches. Uh, so I, I guess none of these are really remarkable. Uh, here is nothing, it's, it's, it's very similar to 
to the to the BHK uh, interpretation, uh, which I remind you is the idea that uh, you can construct um, uh, a, a implies b is uh, is uh, constructible uh, if you if you have an algorithm to go from a proof of a hypothetical proof of a to a proof of b. Here's the same thing, uh, except now in bunches. Uh, so if you have uh, a bunch uh, strengthened, uh, sorry, if you have a bunch uh, B prime that uh, establishes A, uh, then um, uh, uh, then adding uh, the bunch that constructs A implies B to this. Uh, Hypothetical bunch for B uh, uh, that establishes uh, B prime. Uh, the, the union of those two gives you the, 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 the conclusion uh, the B. Uh, so concretely, uh, what we why, when we say that uh, um, uh, that uh, A implies B is 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 okay uh, in a in a bunch is, for example, in this case where uh, uh, you know that A and B together uh, establish A. Uh, oh, I used the same letters. Uh, sorry for that. Uh, I guess I'll, I'll just call this B. I'm sorry because I, this this is sentence level. This is. I hope you got that. Uh, um, so if if A uh, A is a is 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 a finding. Well, a singleton bunch that um, that constructs A implies uh, that constructs uh, well. Suppose that uh, I need to add something here. That A is a um, an establisher for Q. Uh, then. Um, uh, a B is an establisher for Q. Uh, so if we add an establisher for Q to finding A, for example B, then we get B. You see, it's it's like this um, this A finding alone is so uh, constructs. Uh, a implies B uh, because if you add um, uh, sorry Q implies B um, because if you add if you look at the establisher for uh, B you can construct an establisher for P out of there um, so so this is the, the the same idea you basically put uh, um, uh, bunches together in order to uh, uh, see uh, uh, what can be concluded from them. Um, here we have conjunction. Uh, this is just if, 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 if something, if some bunch uh, uh, constructs a conjunction, that is true if and only if it constructs both a conjunct and disjunction, if it constructs either of the uh, conjuncts. Uh, so nothing surprising there, but it's very intuitionistic because you don't allow that some other bunch is still going to uh, uh, um, construct A, uh, A or B. Uh, so you have to either have a bunch of A or a bunch of B uh, in order to have to a bunch that constructs A or B. So this is all pretty natural given BHK interpretation. Um, so and it seems to be like uh, uh, done all the all the symbols. So are we done? Do we have the semantics for it? Since it's logic, unfortunately, unfortunately, it's not as simple as that. Otherwise, people would have uh, uh, already come up with that for a very long time. Um, the crucial thing is here that this here is another symbol. It's not our construction relation. It's our establishing relation. So we have a hypothetical uh, establisher of A, and from that we should get a construction from B for B. Uh, so 
it's uh, you're not going to hypothesize there being uh, a mere construction if you're uh, if you're trying to prove uh, uh, that A implies B. A plus B means in this semantics that uh, if I had um, a, a bunch of scientific studies that actually do the work uh, I wanted to do and nothing more, then from that I can construct. That's my A implies B and that's doing the whole world. So, so it's, it's a strict notion, it's an exact notion first layer here that is going to give us the premise meaning while the conclusion meaning remains fairly standard uh, so we have a kind of a, a, an, uh, uh, an instability or an, an asymmetry between how we interpret the things we conclude from to the things that we conclude uh, to um, and I think this is pretty natural uh, given the fact that um, if we start concluding something, we have to need something, either hypothet hypothetically or, um, or like abstractly. It's not just about there being a construction. It's like we, we, we assume that somebody has given to us the, the, the scientific studies that make that thing constructible. Uh, um, it's like the, 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 the ask for... Um, if, if, I, if I want to prove something, I don't have the task to uh, to, to assume that there is uh, uh, um, some uh, big finding. Uh, I don't have to take into account all of these things at the lower levels. Just have to look at the, the assumption that some findings actually uh, uh, establish this um, and, and see what follows from there. Uh, and then, of course, in, in, the, in, the, in the B here, the thing that follows, the, the, the consequence, uh, we, are, uh, we are just interested in what is constructed by means of the establishments for A. Uh, so establishments for A construct uh, uh, B. That's more or less the idea behind this. It's, and then will also be the consequence relation will also be defined by that. Um, Ah, yeah, uh, yes, yeah, sorry. Uh, yeah, before showing you how establishing works, because now I just said what construction is, uh, but of course, given that we need uh, for antecedents, uh, the, the establishing idea, which is the novel idea here, um, I also have to define what that is, but maybe first, uh, like a preview for the definition of the consequence relations. So gamma intrinsically entails A, if and only if in each model um, a bunch uh, constructs A for each uh, consistent bunch that establishes gamma. And what does it mean to establish gamma? That means that you have um, uh, for each member of gamma uh, a bunch uh, and you take the union of all these bunches. Uh, so we have a, 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 an establisher of Say we have uh, three sentences in there, um, P, Q, and R, only in gamma. Uh, so we have to give a bunch uh, that establishes uh, uh, P, uh, at least one bunch that establishes Q, at least one bunch that establishes R, uh, A, C, D, um, and then a bunch for gamma. It's just uh, the union of all these things, of all these bunches, uh, without anything else, right? It's still about establishing. You don't want to add like things that are irrelevant, but you, if you want to have a, a constructive argument, you have to assume for each premise uh, there to be a hypothetical establisher of it. Um, and whatever uh, establisher you choose, you always have to be able to construct uh, the conclusion. Uh, so again, there, uh, premises are interpreted in terms of establishing and conclusions in terms of construction. There's this asymmetry uh, going through. I still didn't say what establishing means, except, of course, for primitive formulas. And I think that's where the whole originality lies. 
Um, and Ghana will be more or less known. Um, so uh, for uh, established work, the situation is uh, maybe a bit, a bit, a bit weirder, but still, I mean, it's just uh, simple clauses. So of course, for primitive formulas, it's just whatever is established by that formula that's given by the model, right? Um, any bunch that is uh, the establisher for an uh, establisher for uh, uh, the sentence will establish that sentence uh, at, the prim at the primitive formula level. Same for the bottom symbol, the absurdum. Uh, it will just be established by whatever the model says its establishers are. Again, these will not be actualized, but it doesn't matter. Um, we will skip this for a while, the, the implication. Conjunction and disjunction are the, the weird ones out and, and, and are influenced by uh, non-classical semantics, uh, specifically um, uh, git finds and other people's exact semantics. Um, uh, what is a conjunction of uh, what is an establisher for a conjunction of A and B? Well, let's just think uh, intuitively here. Uh, how can we establish uh, that uh, this chair is blue and, and, and black uh, and that uh, Nouvelle Neuve is in uh, Belgium? Uh, well, we, have, we need a finding for the one uh, or a bunch of findings because we might not have enough with one finding a bunch of findings for the properties of this chair, a bunch of findings for uh, the state of Luvela Nerva, the state in which Luvela Nerva is, namely it being, uh, being in Belgium. Um, and then we just have to conglomerate them, just have to take the union. Um, it's not that just like we need a bunch that is both a bunch that establishes the property of Luvela Nerva and the property of the chair. Of course not. Uh, there will not be such a thing. There will be no set of findings that, uh, that, that establishes both of them. They are completely different sentences. So we just need to have the union of the two. We just have the findings uh, that together give you that the uh, Bananerva is Belgium and the findings that the chair is uh, uh, black and, and, uh, and blue um, and join them. So if uh, uh, A and B is true, uh, in a bunch, if the bunch is the union of two bunches where the first one uh, establishes A and the second one establishes B. I find that uh, the only possible clause you might give for establishing uh, um, a conjunction. I don't know, maybe, maybe I'm too uh, biased by the fact that I've been working on this for uh, last week. Uh, for the disjunction, the situation might be a little less uh, um, completely obvious, uh, but still, I would like to strongly uh, defend it, uh, given this interpretation about the findings. So, when is uh, a, a disjunction uh, um, uh, realized or sorry established by a certain finding? When can we say that a scientific study establishes a disjunction? Is it just because it is one of the disjuncts that is established by that scientific study? I say no. Um, why not? Because you, you need a link. Uh, um, I mean, if, if, I, if I have a scientific study that establishes that uh, the vaccine is, uh, is safe, um, that scientific study does not establish that the, scientific, that, uh, that, uh, um, that the vaccine is safe or ineffective. Um, that just is, is a, the scientific study establishes only the strongest claim. Um, neither does uh, 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 that scientific study that, uh, that, uh, that the vaccine is uh, effective against COVID. COVID uh, does it? Uh, um, uh, it does not uh, satisfy either that um, either Belgium is a country or uh, uh, the vaccine is effective. What about uh, policy findings? Like, uh, you get if you are alive or dead, uh, the two are. Or you, uh, you don't know which one uh, we are going to but you have findings that either of, of one will okay? Exactly. So that's what you want uh, a bunch uh, of findings to, to do qua establishing. You want to uh, uh, 
if it's not one, then you should get the other. So this is just not A, right? So, uh, um, not A implies B, and not B implies A. That should be necessary for to, to be able to say that a scientific study uh, establishes something. And this implication is this notion of subjunctive uh, findings that I've been talking about. And because of the lack of reductio, one doesn't just give you two and three for free. You have to add them explicitly exactly. to the semantics. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. Yeah, yes, yes, okay. Yes, 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 Took me a second yes. to catch that. Yeah. 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 Got it. Um, exactly. Um, so, so you have to remember that this arrow uh, is not just uh, uh, a material uh, implication as we have in classical logic. It really means that you can construct um, uh, 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 an establishment into another establishment of, of a sentence. Uh, well, actually, construction into an establishment. Um, mm, so, so it's. Um, uh, it, it's really something extremely strong. Um, it's it's a, it's a modal property. Um, it, it's it's an intentional disjunction that is here. Um, one that says that uh, whatever of the two it is you get, um, if somebody gives me a counterexample for the, the left thing, like for example, a scientific study could very well show that uh, that. Um, um, uh, either uh, the antidepressant uh, works uh, by um, by arousing the patient, patient or by um, decreasing the stress levels or something, then um, what you actually confirm is that um, the antidepressant, uh, if it works, uh, that assume that it's, this patient is not aroused, then it's the stress level that makes the, make the patient uh, uh, no longer depressed. I, mean, I don't know whether it's a good example, but uh, it's this intuition that, that you can only say that a uh, uh, scientific study establishes um, A or B if Whatever proof for hypothetical proof for A would show up later, you can also have B. Um, uh, whatever hypothetical proof against A uh, show up later uh, would automatically give you B. Um, of course, this might be uh, a strong thing to ask, but uh, maybe it's not evident to, 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 to establish stuff. Uh, um, but in full degree, uh, um, you know, because there's not, no probabilistic notions here or something, you might build in some, uh, some sort of uh, uh, subjective probability, Bayesian probability or something that makes our establishing like less than one in, in, uh, in degree of beliefs. That's perfectly reasonable to do. Uh, but, but here we just talk about really established stuff and maybe that's something that never occurs. That's that's something else, or maybe in mathematics, but not in actual science. I don't know. Um, but I don't think that that that. So that's all. There is nothing else in the semantics. Uh, and I think I have gone through every uh, clause and showed that it was plausible. Uh, the interpretation I mostly have gone through. So uh, findings are concrete material of systemic inquiries uh, by agents at a specific time and place. Um, uh, they need not to be actual, uh, they can be of several natures, uh, just whatever you interact, whatever way you have to interact with, with reality out there, uh, or with whatever reality uh, uh, you consider. Uh, um, uh, So a bunch of simply relational like, findings, a uh, bunch can establish and can construct. A, 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 really, the talk is basically over, but I just want to <laughs> see that I didn't. Uh, uh, yeah, so, so just to repeat, uh, establishing is, uh, is a radically exact notion of verification. We want to know what, what exactly uh, 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 did, uh, does confirm this, uh, this sentence. Um, uh, while 
construction itself, uh, and this has some uh, uh, some concrete cases, so A or B uh, is not uh, uh, necessarily established by um, uh, uh, a study that establishes A or a study that establishes B, as I said, um, and a bunch uh, that establishes A does not entail that the extension of the bunch also establish A. I think I have also clarified that. And a bunch, this is a consequent, a bunch that establishes A and B is not necessarily a bunch for A, of course, uh, because it might be too big, uh, like the case of a bunch for chair being black and blue and the Vanamel being in Belgium. Uh, that bunch uh, is not a bunch that establishes the, 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 that, uh, that this chair is uh, uh, black and blue. Okay, um, so, yeah. I think this corresponds to natural language, uh, idea of showing or establishing. Uh, scientific study one, two, and three together show uh, that A is true. Um, I think, according to my natural language intuitions, you cannot just add a fourth uh, study here um, uh, and still get a true sentence. Uh, um, if it's just an arbitrary one, of course, if it's one that like gives extra uh, evidence and so on, then you might have a story. But if it has nothing to do with it, it seems very implausible. Um, uh, so there's a lot of subjunctive establishing that is important. So when um, uh, 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 st findings cannot only just uh, uh, work directly by confirming something, uh, but could also confirm subjunctive stuff. Uh, uh, confirm not uh, uh, facts in the world, let's say, but uh, say that if a finding were found, then, uh, uh, sorry, if a sentence uh, uh, were uh, established, then we might be able to construct uh, um, uh, some, some other uh, sentence. Uh, so that's when scientific studies show relations rather than categorical properties of the world. Okay, um, so it seems that uh, this, well, this is a new interpretation. Uh, it's based on a combination of exact and inexact notions. Uh, usually you have exact semantics and inexact semantics here. It's the two working together. Um, I think it gives a pretty simple intuitive semantics for heuristic logic, if the semantics is uh, adequate, which seems to be the case. Um, uh, and maybe this is kind of a revised approach to empiricism or to verificationism um, where you can uh, build up a view on um, the logic uh, of, of these uh, philosophies uh, that actually directly gives you full interestistic logic uh, without further semantic uh, machinery on top of it uh, by a small detour of our relevance uh, that is like hidden away under it. <laughs> okay, uh, thanks a lot. This is really cool. Um, I have just a tiny, I mean I have a tiny question, it's mostly, it's, it's kind of a weird, it's kind of a weird question. Like, so I, I like the intuitive argument that I like the intuitive argument for the notion of establishing for, for disjunctions. Like, actually, I'm, I'm with you. Um, I guess my, this is, this, yeah, it's kind of an odd question because I'm not sure what this looks like. So, I assume you're doing this now or you've already done it. The flip side of that argument is like, and that, those conditions give you what you want when you put them into action in the, in the logic. Because that's, I mean, I guess what I would say is, Yeah, I'm almost trying to almost apply your dis So you can you can show that those conditions give you what you want for disjunction, and that those are the only conditions that give you what you want for disjunction. And that's that's the one reasonable way to do disjunction, given the rest of the constraints of the framework that you put yes. together. Okay, cool. Yes, 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 yes. Cool, cool. Um, because after all, you want things like uh, disjunctive syllogism to be perfectly okay, right? right. So uh, if you have uh, a bunch that uh, establishes. A or B, and you have a bunch that establishes not A, 
Um, you said you're, you're done. You have that, nothing else if you don't have all those clauses built in. Exactly. And, and so so the, the, the establishment relation then should give you B. Yeah. Uh, and b because B should be constructible out of that. Yeah. Um, okay. Which is not... Uh, um, not natural at all. As, and I think this is actually one of the problems why ordinary solutions that are not asymmetric in, in premises and conclusions um, are so no notoriously difficult to get because it's not because you have either a construction of B or a construction of B, uh, of A or a construction of B, that you would have something like disjunctive syllogism out of there. Um, I mean, they might be completely independent, so why? Um, why would the absence of the one give you uh, the other? Um, so, so this is really uh, a crucial thing, and it wouldn't work without. Uh, um, and it's mainly also the, 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 the most important difference in the interpretation between premises and conclusions, establishing and the constructing. Um, you, you. Uh, established stuff has this modal character sometimes uh, of there being a link between stuff uh, while constructing is just whatever comes out of it uh, um, uh, whatever can be concluded on it, it doesn't the, the whole modal nuances are lost uh, if you ask well, what can be constructed um, and shouldn't be touchable either a construction is just like an abstract uh, notion. Uh, so it, it's always going from something concrete and material to something uh, a bit uh, in the air, abstract, uh, uh, logical consequence. Uh, in that sense, it's really logical empiricism here. Like it's from the establishment, which is like a relation of, 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 of empirical evidence, of, to uh, uh, combined with, uh, with with logic as a like non-material, non-observable thing. Uh. You, you can show the consequence relation. Uh, yeah. <coughs> Gamma is a set of sentence or of a feeling of bench because uh, this this say. We stipulate that B um, establish gamma, uh, a bunch B establish a set of sentences. Mm -hmm. So the set, the set of sentences is an abstract object, not a not a bread or a study, scientific study. And you say in your definition that uh, an abstract object gamma uh, construe a no. Uh, so the same. Uh, um, so it is the union, uh, so B, uh, um, B establishes gamma, gamma is an abstract thing, yeah? of course it's a set. But uh, B is a concrete bunch of uh, findings, uh, establishes this abstract state thing, okay, but if and only if it is the union of a set of bunches. Uh, so they are okay, still okay, a set of bunches. You, you, so you use the same uh, thing, gamma, between gamma and gamma and A, it's not a construction relation, it's a consequence relation, so it's not the same uh, symbol. Oh, oh this, this symbol, yeah. uh, no, it's not the same, it's, it, this is just consequence relation and this yes, is uh, construction. Yes, but uh, it's, a, it's the same. Yeah, I, I use the same symbol, but it's quite common okay. logic uh, to, to have, uh, it's, it's a bit awkward, but... Uh, Consequence. Well, sometimes people use uh, the models symbol in, in LaTeX. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Bigger, but you hardly see the difference. But well, the point is, it's on which to uh, to, to establish on which we can so to uh, consequence symbol. Only yeah, you, you have a um, universal consequence uh, between uh, gamma and A. Why do you use? It's uh, a bit confusing. Yeah, uh, I agree. Maybe I should. Uh, no, it's just something that is quite a conventional and logic to do. Maybe I shouldn't follow that uh, that uh, example. Um, 
you can add to the line or something like that. It's really a different notion. But it's pretty close, nevertheless. Uh, this means that A is constructed from gamma, and this means that A is constructed, um, or no, A can be constructed from <coughs> gamma, let's say, and this means A can be constructed by uh, the bunch. Uh, so it's like from and by. It, 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 it's, it's not completely uh, different, but that maybe makes it maybe more, more uh, counterintuitive, <laughs> even, or more problematic even. Uh, so you're right that I probably should use another symbol there. Uh, just semantic consequence. Uh, this one and this one is verification in the sense of construction. So we went to what Charles was saying earlier. Uh, if uh, I'm not correct, it's a uh, consequence of your uh, establishing relation uh, for this uh, verification strategy that there is no uh, possibility to uh, establish knowledge that's not exhaustive of all possibilities, right? Because if you need uh, this uh, either or and, and uh, establishing that one is not the case, establishing already uh, automatically that one is the case, every uh, scientific finding can only, can only be exhaustive of all possibilities, right? Um, I mean, yeah, if not, you cannot establish that because if, if there is stuff that is left out, you can prove that uh, negating uh, one stuff will authenticate to the other. Uh, yeah, 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 you should indeed. Uh, so, in this case, it's. Um, it's for each uh, bunch uh, that is that establishes A that we should have a construction for the construction, yes, but I was going to say um, the establishing one. Uh, at establishing uh, the, that that's the only clause I didn't talk about. Uh, no, but no, uh, last one uh, when you talk about this dejection of uh, of your uh, yes, 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 I used it, but I didn't. Uh, okay, I'm sorry, I didn't uh, explain it. So, so I use it over here. I don't explain what it means to establish an implication. Uh, I wasn't talking about implication, I was talking about this terms of knowledge. Okay, like, but this is de 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 defined in terms of okay, okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> uh, You know, no, don't sorry, so I'm, I'm sorry for not uh, explaining this right. Um, so, uh, indeed, I, I went a bit quick here. Uh, so, um, here you have um, uh, an implication. Uh, and, and, and in order to do uh, uh, the establishing of that sort of thing, to from not B to A, um, uh, it's something, it's an implication that you need to establish, not just uh, construct the implication, uh, because constructing implication, we have seen what that means, it's from, it's, it's from an hypothetical uh, establisher, uh, any uh, establishing, uh, of it, uh, you have to be able to uh, to construct uh, the B. Here, the implication has to work differently, and that's maybe the only like tricky uh, aspect in the semantics. Um, so, for it to work, uh, 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 I, I think I can justify it, but uh, um, it's a bit weird, nevertheless. Uh, so here, we also have this kind of asymmetry, but in the other direction. Um, uh, so now we say that whatever construction there is for A, um, the, the state or the, the defining B uh, uh, should be, uh, uh, with that construction, should establish B. So from construction, you should go to establishing. Um, and so this is a kind of... A, heavy task to do. Uh, so from the fact that something can be constructed, um, you should be able to establish B, but this is a matter of definition, I guess. Um, uh, because establishing uh, is it's just what, what, what a scientific study or a bunch of scientific studies gives you. So um, just like, um, uh, you have um, 
a set of So it's, it's the art of, of, of making um, um, of, of, of putting hypotheses of, of taking hypotheses in uh, in a scientific study or in mathematics, let's say, to keep it a bit more uh, uh, touch, touchable. Um, so it's like suppose somebody else would construct. Uh, this formula A, for example, um, or some proofs that are available in the literature exists, and together they give um, uh, they, they give me um, uh, arguments to construct uh, a sentence. That's the hypothesis. Um, the why is my study um, an argument uh, for A implies B or an establishment for A implies B? Well, because uh, my study, on top of these other studies, establishes B. So suppose that, that, that they really do construct uh, A, then my extra argument on top of it um, is uh, is enough proof? Is all the proof you need, and not more than that, to go to B? So that's an establishing relation. It's not about like uh, oh maybe uh, only a part of it is needed or something. No, no. It's it's really those things that that together construct plus my study establishes. Uh, uh, the, the, the sentence. So it's like a bit of a, a downgrading sort of. Uh, yeah. I just want to jump in on this because this, this is related to a question that I had about the, this same this same clause. If I am, I'm trying to put on a hat that I do not wear, but I'm trying to imagine that I am like a super cranky intuitionist, like old school. I might be worried about exactly this line that whenever each is introducing some kind of implicit universal quantifier over something that I'm not going to be happy that you're quantifying universally over, right? Like, how am I supposed to know about all the constructions, even the ones that I don't even have, that I've never done, the proofs I've never written, the approaches that I've never thought about? Um, am I going to be mad about that? If I, 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 I'm trying to impersonate, like I say, maybe, maybe I'm, I'm misimpersonating the constructivist here. Uh, but I, but I worry where, about this, right? I see where you're coming from, but uh, on the other hand, and this is purely hypothetical, right? Uh, so maybe there are, like, as a mathematician, you, you, you don't care so much about... Um, or not only about what is true, but also about the relations between truths mm -hmm. and... Mm -hmm. um, or what is constructed, what a relation between what is constructed. So you've, you have to give an algorithm to get to transform a certain proof into another proof. Now, um, it might be enough that I mean there might not be a proof for this very outrageous universal claim, but if there were a constructible proof, right? I mean, this is it, it, it's not establishing relation, but uh, uh, no, sorry, this one. It's not the establishing relation, right, right. but it is the constructive relation. So there is a constructive proof for A. I mean, you hypothesize that there is one. Uh, then my algorithm, uh, the, the, the new bunch, uh, that is the algorithm, that, that together forms the algorithm, uh, gives you the, 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 the true. And now that, and now that you say that, I have distinct memories of reading, like reading in, in, in Brower papers and stuff. Like the constructivists do reason like this all the time. Yeah, from like 
Say that, say that we had a constructive proof for A, so we would know exactly what the members of the set were. So then we could take those members of the set and we could blob with them. Yeah. And then you use that to go somewhere else. And that's, that's right, they do, they do talk like that. They talk like that all the time. Um, so maybe they won't be mad. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's helpful. That's helpful. I see I'm like on some of them. You cannot establish, uh, if you take the sum of all uh, knowledge, you cannot establish that because it's not uh, exhaustive of the world of the total sum of knowledge. And you cannot, you cannot, you cannot say that uh, either uh, one obtain or the other, right? So the, the, the junction of all the knowledge that you have, is, is not establishable. You just can construct it, but not establish it. Uh, yes, that's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, because you need, you need an exha exhaustion of all the, of, uh, the uh, a need that your disjunction is exhaustive of the possibilities, right? Yeah, yeah. but uh, these big disjunctions are never, are never supposed to be established. It is not interesting to establish them. And they are just typically the kind of thing that we conclude from establishments, from, from findings. Uh, so there we are really at the level of, of logic and not at the level of, of empirical uh, uh, findings. So, so yeah, no, no, these big disjunctions, they will never be established, or, I mean, of course, the model does not, I mean, there might be models that, that do that. Uh, this is just an abstract uh, construction. But in the interpretation, it would not, uh, the model of the world <laughs> that corresponds to the world is not like that. I, yeah, it also means that, uh, I know that you know, I'm doing monotonic stuff, but still, it requires that there is some kind of progress in the science, right? That's if you have a more Kuhnian uh, position, there is actually no progress in each revolution you change all your knowledge or your knowledge, you can't establish this kind of... Uh, uh, right? well, you, you can, can still do it at, at, a at each time. time. At each time. Each time. Uh, but you need another mechanism to, to, to account for the fact that... Diachronic logic of uh, revolutions, which we don't have. It's <laughs> fine. You know, uh, um, uh, I don't think it's contrary to Kuhnian approaches, but it's uh, it doesn't it does certainly does not give a logic or something for those. Uh, um, it just should be very careful about putting findings together <laughs> uh, and not believe that this uh, will still keep the first thing of a finding because it might be a contradiction. One more question that's totally wild, so you're absolutely free to just say, no, I haven't thought about that. Uh, but I wonder, because I've played with a lot the the cryptic frame interpretation back in the day. Um, so now that you have this, have you thought about looking at so what these relations look like if you cast them back into the cryptic frame kind of perspective? Or are they going to analogize, or is that just not going to make any sense? I don't think so. I wouldn't this think so is, either, which is, which is kind of cool, right? Like, I, because there's something interesting about having almost like incommensurable interpretations of the same semantics is kind of wild. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it, it, it's really weird. And, and it's kind of almost a miracle that it's the same. Uh, that I should maybe have said. Uh, so um, this, this, this gives you uh, prima facie a, a, a non-transitive relation because you have a very strong interpretation of the premises, namely they have to be established, and a weak interpretation of the conclusions, they can just be constructed. So if you want to chain them, of course, you don't have a, a construction for, I mean, if, it, if you have A implies B, or A entails B, uh, if you have B entails C, I mean, you, have, you go down, you, you have to strengthen, I'm not making myself very clear, I'm not making myself clear, um, so if you have A implies B and B implies C, um, well, this means that A is from, a, from an establishment of A, you get a construction of uh, B, and here from an establishment of, 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 of B, you get a construction of C. Um, so uh, this doesn't say that you, that you have, uh, if you want to go from A to C, you have to from a, uh, uh, then you have to go from a, an establishment of A to the construction of C. Uh, 
By an establishment of A, you get a construction of B, but there is no changing because uh, you don't have a establishment of B, you just have a construction of B. Uh, so this, that the fact that this holds, which of course it does, if it's a good semantics for logic, logic, um, it's kind of a miracle, uh, and it's a miracle of, of cut elimination. Um, so this is basically the cut rule, um, which Gantz improved for his uh, intrinsics calculus, that it can be eliminated. So you can do everything without ever using cuts. And that is exactly the reason why the semantics works. Uh, like you can get all the Gantz rules. Uh, so every proven intrinsic logic you can perfectly build. And then afterwards, you know that you have proven everything. Um, so, so, like, uh, in specific bunches, if you go to look at when you already have findings and so on, then cut is not going to work. But in like the empty bunch, where you start from nothing at all, and you have to really presuppose A, uh, a bunch for A, and then construct a CB, and then, and then it will be uh, transitive. Um, so, like under the hood, it's non-transitive, deeply non-transitive, and relevant, and so on. But the relation you get out of it, like in the empty bunch, like the, the interesting thing in relation, is by miracle, as Pierre says it, uh, um, uh, uh, transitive. Uh, and, and this is a, a thought behind every single semantics I've seen, that intuition is about a transitive notion. Uh, it doesn't take into account the elimination theorem uh, by Gensen. Uh, uh, so, so, so that is why uh, I am why this fairly is so different. honest, yeah. uh, fairly comfortable, comf uh, uh, fairly uh, sure that, uh, like in Kripke frames, you will always like look at, you know, uh, same interpretation for premises and conclusions and and and. And notions that are not hyperintentional, well, establishment is a, obviously a hyperintentional notion. You know, practically no laws of logic, ordinary laws of logic apply for it. Um, and these are typically in, in, in possible world semantics not characterizable at all. You need like more fine-grained semantics for it. So I'm fairly, I'm fairly confident that it doesn't work at all. Uh, That's cool. That's really cool. Hopefully it's correct too. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the proof seems to work. Now, you know. Prove it on the whiteboard. No, I'm not going to ask you. I wouldn't understand it if you did it, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> oh, it's pretty simple. <laughs> because it's so close to the, the Gensen rules. Mm -hmm. uh, it's really derived from sure. the proof theory rather than sure. like, trying to... Uh, oh, that's cool. But... Thanks a lot for all these nice questions. And, and but, but I, I, I want, I'm asking you whether you find this reading intuitive. I find it intuitive, and the clauses, at least for disjunction and conjunction, which are usually the most difficult to argue for for non-transitive approaches, they seem to be the only thing you can get given these interpretation of establishment and constructing. But maybe I'm like extremely biased. The only word I do vaguely share uh, Kevin's worry about about like the metaphysics of findings, but partly I think it's just funny because I'm not used to I'm not used to living in this world in some sense that, that in that sense that it's 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 how to put this. It's actually potentially advantageous that it's vague. In the sense that in the sense that there's more than one more there being more than one kind of thing that can do the job is actually like in no sense a problem. Right? Well, and that, I, that would be the end of it. Yeah. The and I'm not and I'm not actually I'm not actually used to that. So I guess in some sense maybe I, I, I should kind of I should kind of quash my, my unease because like actually it's good. Um, it means more people can agree with you because you're not forcing them to adopt a particular metaphysics of, of findings. Yeah, that, 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 that. Uh, 
Yeah, so that's why I like it because it's 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 both usable for mathematical purposes and mm. construction mm. or you know, uh, more the antique approaches or, or philosophy of science like in the usages of, of, of intuitionistic logic. It all seems to because a finding might also be like um, uh, a concrete. Uh, Like punishment given uh, or something like that. Uh, I mean, if you have a deontic leading, but I, that would take us way too far. But like, uh, um, and, and I haven't properly thought that through. But like, I really like the people have been using intuitionistic logic in many different domains, and I kind of think that a good interpretation should also take these applications seriously to the maximum. That's why a finding is sufficiently vague, but of course, of course if, you, if you give substance to it, it might become uh, more... I guess the one other thing that I have, uh, the one thing that I have a little bit of trouble kind of intuitively interpreting is, so finding fine, upper set, or sorry, finding fine, uh, set of findings fine, upper set of set of findings, that's a bit of a weird object to play with, right? Because so. um, it seems to kind of imply, I guess that maybe that maybe that this is and this is a bit related to this kind of synchronic diachronic notion. Maybe that's a bit. Think of the universe of think of it, there being a kind of closed universe of findings, uh, yeah. such that the upper set is like a reasonable thing for you to play with. Is a little awkward. Now I'm not saying. I mean, it's perfectly within the realm of like modeling assumptions that you could make to try to construct a logic to play with these objects. Like I'm not saying that I think it's weird once you're already in that perspective, but it does it does have that implication that's a bit funky. Yes. In, at a hyperintuitive level. I do agree, and it's also non-constructive because it's an infinite set. Um, ah, right, right, right. Of course it is. But uh, you don't need it really. It doesn't occur in the in the. In the it's just to, to characterize this notion of proposition of of, of, of every of, of what is constructed. Uh, sorry, of which bunches construct the same formula. If you have a given a sentence and you wonder, like, how can we construct it? That would be the proposition. If you want a notion of proposition, like right. every possible way in which you can construct it. Uh, then obviously that will be an infinite notion. I mean, uh, mm -hmm. it's not just like actual, uh, but also like potential ways to construct. So of course, it's going to be. Infinite. But um, I don't use that the, the yeah, notion of proposition. If you don't like it, don't use it then. Uh, yeah, 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 that's yeah. it. Uh, um, so all the clauses, um, I mean, you have the clause, of course, for, a, for what is a construction for a primitive formula. And that is that some bunch in it ex uh, uh, explicates it, uh, uh, establishes it, um, included in it, some bunch included in it, etc. And this is very close to the notion of, of this, uh, this upper set. Uh, but, um, I mean, it's just a property, right? It's not a set uh, as such uh, you need in that case. Uh, uh, you just need that. Uh, well, one of the things, I am a bunch, one of the things inside of me uh, establishes it. Uh, you don't have to look at in the other way around to the up. You have to look down, right. uh, and right. that does not. That is not a non-constructive notion. It's not uh, so it's only if you want to get a notion of construct of, of proposition out of it, of non-hyperintentional proposition, because there's also hyperintentional propositions, namely the potential uh, establishers of it. Uh, but if you want this notion of proposition, I don't know why it. Then that's a non-constructive notion, but you don't need to take that seriously. Sure. It's a sort of potential infinity. Okay, then uh, cool. if there's no more comments, then thanks. That's, uh, thanks. Thank you so much for uh, the attention and for the great questions and, and comments. It was uh, extremely useful.